Hi, in this video I want to show you a book that you can use to get started with basic mathematics. It's written by people who have a lot of experience writing math books and they've written other good books. It's called Intermediate Algebra, Graphs and Functions, and this is the one by Larson, Hostetler, and Neptune. This is a mathematics textbook, so the difference between this and a workbook is that this has more examples, more content, um, typically the uh, quality of the book, the physical features are better. Um, it's heavy duty. I will try to leave a link in the description in case you want to check out this book um, because I think it's worth it. So let's go ahead and open it up and take a brief look at the contents. Here are the people who wrote the book. This is the second edition. It doesn't matter too much which edition you get. Here's the copyright. This particular one is from 1998. So certainly been a while. And it starts from the very beginning, concepts of elementary algebra. So operations with real numbers, properties of real numbers, really basic stuff. And then it jumps into graphs and functions right away, which is pretty cool. Then it goes into linear functions, equations, and inequalities. Then systems of linear equations and inequalities radicals and complex numbers, quadratic functions, equations, and inequalities, rational expressions and rational functions, more about functions and relations, and then exponential and logarithmic functions and equations. This is something that you typically don't see in a lot of intermediate algebra books, so it's kind of cool uh, that this one includes it. And this also has topics in discrete mathematics. So if you're going into computer science, this might be something that you see uh, later because you have to take a discrete math class typically as a computer science major. Let's open it up randomly so you can see uh, the layout of the book. So this is the section on graphs of functions. So it talks about the actual graph of a function. This is a concept that is huge by the way. Understanding the graph of a function will help you a lot when you go further in mathematics. It's super key and a lot of times if you can just draw a little picture in more complicated problems, you'll be able to solve it just by drawing that picture. So it gives you a simple example where you plot by uh, plotting the ordered pairs. Then it has graphs of linear functions. So you see it has examples. It has a very, very uh, modern layout, you know, compared to older books that don't really use a lot of color. Um, the modern layout, just like the shading of the boxes and stuff, it does make it easier for people, I think, to learn. And that's why that's why new books are different from old books, right? Because the idea is that books try to improve. Um, the difficulty level of this book is very low. So that's another thing about modern math books. Typically, uh, newer books are easier than old books because uh, they've been rewritten over and over and revised so that students can understand them. So they're written more with the student in mind, I think. Lots of examples, right? They even have some examples of graphing piecewise functions. This is a topic that oftentimes isn't covered in intermediate algebra courses. Uh, it's very difficult for, for people to learn uh, this particular topic. Uh, I know that when I've taught pre-calculus, that's typically where I spend a lot of time on the graphing of piecewise functions. That's you know, several courses after you know, intermediate algebra. So this does have a lot of content uh, that is considered more advanced for intermediate algebra. There's plenty of exercises as you can see here, so you get tons of examples. And this one being a modern book uh, does have some answers in the back of the book. And you can see it has answers to the odd numbered exercises. So how do you use this book um, to learn mathematics? Like let's say you're taking a class right now and you want to learn with this book. Well, let's say you're taking a class, right? And you're studying um, you know, radical equations. So what you would do is you would go to the table of contents right of this book because if you're taking a class now you probably have like online homework and you look for radical equations so it's going to be page 385 so you go to page 385 and then you can see the examples and you just work through you know each of the examples in this book one of the things that is really um, bad in my opinion today um, about uh, taking classes in college uh, is that a lot of the homework is online. That's also really good uh, because I also like online homework, but there's pros and cons to everything. And I think 
The biggest con, and, and there's many pros to online homework, but the biggest con is that most students don't buy the physical book. And you can buy the physical book for your class, but usually it's super expensive because it's a newer edition. So my advice uh, or my recommendation now is, you know, do what you have to do in your class, but get an old copy of a used book like this one, and this can supplement any intermediate algebra class you take, right? Because it's going to have everything you need and more um, than you need for your class. So it's a great supplement, and you can get worked examples. And you know, when your class ends, you know, your online homework is over. Like usually it's like a subscription service and it expires and you don't have anything physical. Well, at the end of class, you'll have this book which you probably got for less than 20 bucks, you know? So, worth getting. Look at all of these examples. This is crazy. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's just ridiculous. Ridiculous, 10 examples. And the last two are applications, which are pretty cool, actually. And then you have tons of exercises. So you can become a, a, a solving a radical equations master with, with a book like this. Really impressive. And again, this is a topic that a lot of times uh, isn't taught. Like the harder ones aren't usually covered in an intermediate algebra course. Um, in the past, I've taught this mainly in college algebra. So... Quite an advanced book. At the same time, it does have a lot of you know, basic topics uh, as well. So yeah, I think it's worth getting. Um, there's different ones you can get. I'm not saying that this is like the best intermediate algebra book. Oh, look at this, look at this, look at this. Someone was writing an explanation here. This is pretty hardcore. Graphing of rational functions. Again, this is something that um, I would typically uh, teach in a pre-calc class, uh, but this book has a real big emphasis on graphs, you know, graphs and functions. So you get a lot of uh, more advanced topics in this book. Wow, wow, look at some of these examples. Definitely not something you would see uh, in, a, in a typical intermediate algebra class. You wouldn't, well, asymptotes, yes, but the graphing, let's see if they hard, have harder graphs. Yeah, yeah, a little bit harder, right? So something you typically wouldn't do in intermediate algebra. Average cost, it's an application to business. Pretty cool, pretty cool book. Um, yeah, I think it's great. I think I paid less than $10 for this book, so you can probably get uh, used copies pretty cheap. I'll try to leave a link in the description. Uh, I'll look for it, and when you click the link, um, just look for used copies so you can save some money if you want, but yeah. Anyways, if you want to learn math, I actually do have courses. They're on my website, mathsorcerer.com. They're actually on the Udemy platform, but if you use the links on my website, it really, really helps me. So please use the links uh, through my website, mathsorcerer.com, if you choose to buy any of my courses. Also, if you found any value in this content, uh, consider hitting subscribe if you want to. And also, lastly, I do have a fitness channel where um, I talk about fitness. It's called The Fitness Sorcerer. So you can train your mind here on The Math Sorcerer and train your body on the fitness sorcerer. Train your mind and train your body. Two things that I try to do every single day. But great book, I can't say enough good things about it. Um, I love these simple math books. Um, I started at math before this, so I know what it's like to struggle and I think a book like this can really uh, be life-changing if you actually sit down and, and work through it. But yeah, until next time, good luck. Keep doing mathematics.